couple CDs here. Yes, this is. Uh, we've been a commercial studio for about four years, and uh, mastering. We just sort of fell into mastering at the beginning, and we've developed it. So you know, we're doing a really, really good job now. Um, this is about half of the albums we've worked on. So there's a lot we don't get. Sometimes you don't see a group for a couple of years, or they forget that they should send you their album. <laughs> so. Um, most of the stuff is indie, uh, but we know we we work with uh, major label artists um, like uh, the Nylons, and we've done some Drifters for the states. And Colin Linden is a regular up here, and uh, Blacking the Rodeo Kings, and uh, some of the better known indies are Trigger Happy, uh, Harold Nix from Vancouver, um, and on and on. There's just so many bands out there. Um. Tell me a little bit about the complex. So, Cardi, you were telling me about the Arcadia complex. You were yes, in there? you were in the uh, Arcadia Housing Cooperative, and, and Arcadia was designed uh, for living and working for people that work in the arts. And as you can tell, the arts is a very broad thing here. We have, you know, musicians like Colin Linden lives here, Terry Wilkins lives here, and there's a lot of visual artists and painters and sculptors. And it's 110. Uh, sort of apartment building, but it was designed right off the bat to live and work, and people can renovate the space however they want, and this is totally changed from what it was originally. Uh, tell me a little bit about your background. How did you actually get into this? Uh, my background is uh, I spent over 20 years as a recording musician, a guitarist to be exact, and uh, I played in the studio for many years, uh, film scores and records, and uh, I worked in theater, like playing Evita at the O'Keefe Center, and uh, I played with the Pointer Sisters and the Supremes and backed up a lot of acts around here. And in a jazz uh, area, I played with Phil Nimmons. And basically, uh, I p my background is very well-rounded. I play everything from heavy metal to uh, Hello Dolly banjo stuff. So that's what we used to have to do in, in to make a living in the studio. Uh, you re how did the recording start? Was it like you started with a four track and just built up? Or? The recording here, I started as, uh, I got tired of the music, actually the playing part of the music business, and I started wanting to produce. So I started uh, working with artists and producing tracks. And uh, this used to be a pre-production studio where we'd get everything together and then go to the big studio. And it's only recently that uh, uh, we've, you know, four years that we switched into being a commercial studio. I kind of gave up in the producing and got into the mastering. So um, basically, when you're working with an engineer, you want to have uh, people that have a good background in the music you're doing and uh, also have good ears. And the way you get good ears is to uh, play and work Tin with Emmys people. I heard Tin yeah. Okay, yeah, I yeah. Well, that's an interesting project because um, as, long as well as mastering, Oh uh, yeah, I know. Actually, know the guy. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. Tell me that. Well, we we have. It's a funny story. You, you realize the the price of CD production, manufactured CDs, has come down to a very very low price these days. Because as you know, any serious band now has their own CD. So four years ago, we saw all our mastering clients going down the street to uh, CD seller A, CD seller B, CD seller C, and we thought, well, we found out that nobody that sells CDs actually makes them on premises. So this is something a lot of independent artists don't know. They think these big companies that sell CDs actually have uh, little guys with uh, white coats and hats uh, around the corner in the back making CDs. But the truth is, all CDs are manufactured by two pressing plants, and being all mean uh, being Sinram and Americ Disc, and all the printing is done by Ross Alice or Shorewood. Now, people that sell CDs are CD brokers. So you come in and you place your order and we send the order to the plant. So what happened is Silver Birch Productions decided we would get into selling CDs. And uh, we do about 80,000 a year now. It's like a secondary business for us. <laughs> and almost all our mastering clients that don't have record deals come here and do their CDs as well. because. Well, you're mastering something, they can be talking to somebody else that works here about the so CDs. So you're, you're kind <laughs> of a one-stop shop, but you can rec actually record it to master it, you can give it a phone. Well, anybody that's seen our ad and now will, will know that it says recording, mastering, and CDs at one location. <laughs> so it's uh, actually, you know, it's, it's an okay business. It's not a lot of profit margin, but a lot of people like to do things all, you know, in one place. They don't have to go anywhere. And like I say, nobody actually makes them on premises. Even even brokers that sell half a million a year don't make them on premises either. So the only difference between us and CD seller A, B, C is price and service. 
So the bands that are looking for CDs are advised to shop around, get the best price, and make sure they deal with people that they're comfortable dealing with, and uh, people that will bring their project in on time. And other than that, the quality is identical. These all look like they came out of a record store because they're made by the same plants that make the, the major label CDs. Any requests for vinyl or I see an 8-track? This is yes, I, I, I mastered an 8-track <laughs> recording <laughs> just that, last year. <laughs> no way, I, I would have thought 73 or something. No. Why would anybody have an... Uh, I guess uh, a gimmick. I, I, what do you play on though? I guess you go to the Goodwill and get your player. I, I didn't master it to 8-track. The gentleman took his uh, DAT away and or CDR away and uh, did it himself. Okay, so you are now seeing the uh, recording booth at Silver Birch, and uh, you are seeing Chris Perry, our recording engineer. And Chris uh, does our recording and also does mastering too. He's a very good engineer. He uh, is the producer and of an April March. They're a sort of um, semi well known group in, in Canada and in the States. They have five albums out, so they, they do more business in the States, but he's produced all their albums. And uh, he's worked here for four years and basically um, he's worked on every album that I haven't worked on. So we have lots of credits between us. For young guys who want to get into this, into this thing, what do you have any advice? Well, I'll tell you, there's, um, it's a real shame now. There's, uh, like back when I started, there were no schools for this kind of thing. And uh, our, the problem now is there's too many. We have at least uh, five or six uh, schools that are churning out engineers and it's uh, a bit sad because we get resumes twice a week and we're just one small studio basically. So um, I really don't know what to say. I mean, Chris's story is actually very good to give engineers a little hope and that is he wandered in one day looking for a place to do some recording and uh, I was just thinking at that time of hiring somebody but I didn't have a lot of money. so. We work something out. Isn't that, the, <laughs> isn't that the, always the way it is? It, it is, but I'll tell you, you know, he makes a lot now, <laughs> and he's been here for four years, and he basically came, uh, you know, out of working out of his basement and, you know, a little bit in other studios. He didn't have a lot of experience, but he had the very key thing, which is ears. In other words, he he knew what to listen to, and he knew what to adjust, and he was he's he's creative, and uh, he's knows how to work with the technical gear. So now, if you have an engineer that knows the technical stuff and has good hearing, uh, you pretty well, and who's well-rounded stylistically, that's very important also, uh, then you have a really good person. And he had all those qualities uh, uh, in a raw form, and he's developed them over a period of time here to the point where, as I'm sure he could go work in any top-notch studio now and, and do just fine. Do some typing or something. I'm just looking for some B-roll. Do some mastering. Oh, you can maybe work on the bottom screen. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, we can watch this one freeze. <laughs> Check out my settings. Just don't save. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, just don't save. <laughs> 